Yo, what up, what up? This is not a podcast. You know what it is. This is just my thoughts with Rob Markman. I seen something happen interesting in the news yesterday in the media that I want to come in here and talk about. Something that I feel like I could provide some insight on. And then, you know, like we always do have a conversation in the comments about it, about what your expectations are around this certain topic. Um, like, subscribe, leave comments. You know how it goes. Um, I want to talk about artist interviews, right? You know, it's been a, it's been a topic. Um, Elliot has talked about it on the Joe Budden podcast about how he feels that artists need to do interviews and, and, you know, need journalists to help tell their story. I'm not going to get into all of what Elliot said. I just saw the clips of it, but you know, I tend to agree with him and those who kind of know me and Elliot's kind of history on we're cool, we're, we're cool, but we definitely disagree on a lot of things. We have disagreed publicly on a lot of things. I've disagreed with him publicly on a lot of things. Um, but I feel him on that. But this isn't even about that. This is more so. So yesterday, Tyler was on The Breakfast Club. I know Tyler, singer from South Africa, Water, big song, big record, big tune, rising star. I think she has a super bright future, just dropped her album. Um, so Tyler was on The Breakfast Club. And she had this interaction with Charlemagne and really the, the whole crew. But there was this one specific interaction where he asked her about previous comments where she referred to herself as a colored woman and and i'm not going to get into this uh, you know into the racial identity aspect of it right but you know where she kind of reserved or then kind of but she referred to herself as a colored woman you know she looked off camera towards somebody when he asked the question and off camera somebody from Tyler's team asked Charlemagne can we not you know what i'm saying so they they wanted to skip the question this video is not about racial identity. Nobody knows who Tyler is more than Tyler. And in different parts of the world, you know, when we're talking about any identity, any racial identity, any ethnicity, but, you know, specifically in this case, blackness and how people identify is just different across the world, right? Culture is a factor. Language is a factor. Um, there's a lot of just context that you may miss if you're one from one part of the world from one country and not another things have different meaning in different parts of the world and so you know also tyler did a, a statement of her own where, where she explained herself or her stance or how she identifies she doesn't not identify as a black woman you know what i'm saying like it's fine. Her explanation was that's who she is. She knows who she is. She's representing who she is. Right. But the deal is this, you know, again, this is not about racial identity. The deal is, you know, so I spoke with someone from the breakfast club just to find out what happened. And because it seemed very familiar to me being in the media. And basically what it was, was that Tyler's team gave a list of questions that they didn't want her to be asked. And her team was told that Charlemagne wouldn't comply. Um, you know, and, and that's what it is. And, and you know, I, I've seen this before. And they chose to do the interview anyway. Um, you know, Tyler, again, didn't answer the question on, on air. You know, I, I, we saw that clip go viral. Honestly, the interview was chill for the most part. Like, that was just such a small part of the interview. Um, most of it went off with, like, it was just without a hitch. And then she posted the statement on social media after. And it was fine. You know, if you ask me, it's not my decision to make. But... You know, just be prepared to talk about it. She could have said that on the show and it would have been fine. I don't think it was any drama. But again, the, the, I'm not I don't even want to get into the racial identity aspect of this because it will be here forever. Right. This is as someone in the media, as someone who's done countless interviews, like literally can't even count for double XL, for MTV, for Genius, for Amazon. Those are just the place that I work long term, right? I'm not even talking about the places that I freelance, but someone who's just done a ton of interviews throughout my career. I've interviewed Jay-Z multiple times, never been told what to ask him. Lil Wayne, multiple times, never been told what to ask. Nicki Minaj, never, you know, if, if y'all see, y'all can look it up. I did this Queen interview, this 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 lyrical Queen interview. It was a part of our Genius Level series at Genius. There was never a conversation of what we could and couldn't ask Nikki about. The conversation just flowed freely and naturally. It was an amazing and beautiful interview. Um, interview Mariah Carey for, for Genius Level. Again, beautiful interview. Mariah Carey never once came up like her team of, of what could or couldn't be asked. Beautiful, legendary interview. Um, 
Kendrick Lamar interview for around to Pimp a Butterfly, and I interviewed Kendrick a bunch of times. Um, that you know we've been talking about a lot lately in the comments and, and stuff like that. Never came up what I couldn't and couldn't ask. Rest in peace to Mac Miller. Rest in peace to Nipsey Hussle. Wiz Khalifa. I can go on and on and on. Um, some of the biggest, some of the best, some of the most veteran artists. Even when they weren't so veteran, there was never a conversation of of what you could and couldn't ask. Now, also, I don't I don't have the reputation of me. Like I like to keep it strictly about the music. I felt like, especially when I was at MTV. You know, I felt like there was a shift. It really was happening when I was at Double XL, uh, you know, and I left Double XL in 2011. There was this shift where, you know, I got in this to talk about music. I love music, so I'm talking to artists about music. And there was this shift where I felt like a lot of publications was taking the TMZ approach, shifting to the TMZ model of reporting celebrity other than music. And that works for TMZ. Like, we all consume it. We can act like we're above it. We all consume it. But that's just not what I wanted to do. That's not what I got into it for. Like, I wanted to do deep dives into the music. So that's always been my thing. And at places where I worked, I've just seen that it shift. You guys see the shift, too, as the audience, right? I'm like, oh, people were following the TMZ model. So even when I got to MTV after a while, it was just like, all right, like, where's the growth here? And when I joined Genius in 2015, I say, yo, I want to create a space where artists can come just to talk about their music. They don't have to talk about who they're dating or, or who they have beef with or just the latest drama. It was just like, man, how did this record get made? And, you know, for the most part, you know, we did that. So I, I say all that to say, I, I don't have the reputation of having these real kind of salacious or... Or even just just interviews that kind of go viral for 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 drama or for negative reasons or for misconceptions. And you know, when you sit with me, it's pretty straightforward. And that's not even to say that um, that's not a judgment on anybody else. This is just how I choose to approach it, right? You know, there's been a lot of let's just say because we're talking about the Breakfast Club. There's been a lot of moments on the Breakfast Club that went viral. A lot of things that have went left. Um, one, because of the magnitude of how big they are and, um, you know, who Charlemagne is, who, who's a friend of mine and, and, and a dear friend, somebody who I respect, but like he, he's not afraid to take it there. And, that, and I'm not saying I'm afraid to take it there. It's just what I choose to do is how, how I choose. But, you know, he'll, he, historically he has pushed that line, but at the end of the day, you got to respect the platform that you come to. You know what I'm saying? Like, as an artist or an artist's team, you want the benefit that that platform brings. The benefit is the audience, you guys who are watching. We know that if artist A sits down with this platform, they're going to be opened up to an audience that's X amount of people. That's y'all. That's what y'all represent. So you want the benefit of it, but at the same time, you have to respect the platform and how the platform does because, you know... We all have audience. Charlemagne has an audience. I have an audience, you know. Um, and to me, I, I've said this before. I'm, I'm, my relationship or my strongest relationship has to be my relationship with my audience. Like y'all got to trust me. Y'all got to want to click on this. Y'all got to want to like have to believe in me before anything else. So, you know, I say that to say sometimes, like, like not even sometimes, like we got to stand up for kind of what we believe and, and the way we want to approach things. Um, and that's not to say either just in this Tyler situation, Tyler might not have even known that her team was 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 going and, and saying, hey, well, don't ask this, don't ask that. There is a world where she didn't even know. There's a world where she knows and says, hey, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about that. Can you tell them not to ask this? There's absolutely a world where that happens. There's also a world where she didn't know. Because, um, you know, I've worked with so many artists and so many teams. A lot of times people on, on, on the team feel like they have to protect the artists in, in, in strange ways, you know. So, you know, I say all that to say, you know, there's, there's, I, I've interviewed some of the top artists in the world, in the game. I've interviewed Katy Perry. I've interviewed, like, not even just hip-hop. Katy Perry, when I was at MTV at the VMAs, Lady Gaga, when... when 
she came dressed as, as, as a guy. She was role playing at the VMAs. Um, Miley Cyrus backstage at the VMAs. Um, Camila Cabello, Virginia's like pop artists, like different genres. Never by these artists that I'm naming, never have been told what or what not to ask. And I appreciate the artists and I appreciate their teams for respecting me as much to to know that that we're gonna do something really great if they just if if, if you agree to come to my platform or agree to come to me then you trust what I have to deliver. You know, I have been in situations, though, where artists have, or their teams, again, because sometimes the artists don't know, where the teams come to you about what you can or can't ask. And it's insulting. Like, like honestly, it's insulting. Most times, more times than not, I'm like, then we're not doing the interview. Like, I'll just turn down the interview altogether. Like, it's not even worth it. I'll give you a story of, of, of earlier this year. Earlier this year when Kanye and Ty Dolla Sign dropped Vultures, somebody from Kanye's team asked if I'd be down to interview him and Ty about the album. Now, at this point where I'm doing this on my own, again, for those who, who follow every video, I've talked about this. I've been blessed. Double XL, MTV, Genius, Amazon. Like, I, I've been blessed to be attached to these bigger entities that handle the production. I'm at a place, and I still work at Genius. As a, a lot of people are confused at that. I still work there. I'm still the VP of content strategy. I'm just not on camera talent. I'm just not, you know what I mean? Like, so the on camera part of me, the talent part of me, the, the, journalistic, the talking head, the personality part of me, whatever you want to call it, is independent productions. It's me in this room, turning on that camera, editing the video, posting it, doing whatever I do to the audio, getting it up. So at this point in my career, an interview with Kanye when I'm doing this personality thing independently is a huge look. It would be amazing look. It would be amazing boost. But what this person from Ye's team had come to me and asked and said, hey, you know, we would like for you to do it. We would like to take this idea to Ye. We would like for this to happen. Um, would you be down? The only thing is we just want to keep the interview just about the music. Because Ye is in the news for all types of other stuff and it becomes a distraction. I get it. And, you know, I had to sit and think. I knew what my heart told me right away, but I'm like, damn, am I playing myself? This is a different game, man. This would be big for you. I absolutely thought about it. And I just came back to the, to the answer that I always had. And I went to them and I said, look, I, I appreciate you thinking of me, but I can't do it. Ye, at this point in his career, is larger than life. He's bigger than even the music. And he has said and done so much that it would be insane for me to to sit here and talk with him and just have a musical conversation and feel like we can't get clarity or, or, or on some of the things that he said and people that he's hurt and controversy that he's caused, you know, um, from, you know, whatever. Y'all know. Y'all see the headlines. Y'all know what it is. I can't do that. And I, I, I can't I can't be used like that now. In my career, again, I've built myself up as the guy who just talks about the music or strictly talks about the music because that's what my passion is. But I'm like, I don't know if this was their intent and, and hear my words because there's a difference between intent and how I felt. But I'm like, if, if, if I adhere to what y'all asking me, it makes me feel if, if, if y'all using my superpower against me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if you understand, that's just how I felt. I felt like I was being used. Whether it was their intent to use me, I felt like I was being used. And and the other thing is, I don't know how much Kanye was involved in these conversations, and so I can't speak for that. But it was somebody. It was absolutely somebody from his team who worked directly with him, who I've had this conversation with. The, you know, the other part of it was that hey, I had been the music guy for years. I had built that reputation for years of being the guy who speaks just about the music. And y'all didn't come to me then. Y'all didn't look for me then. Y'all didn't look for me years ago. Like, I've, I've been doing this for years. I'm 20 years in the game. But now, you know, it, it just didn't feel right. So I said no. I said no to the interview just to, to not even 
have a situation where either A, I'm going to sit here and feel like I'm playing myself by not asking. I'm going to sit here and feel like I'm playing y'all by not asking. And then it's just going to become this fight and this contentious thing. You know what? I just avoid it. I'm out. You know, whoever else y'all were considering, you know, go ahead and do it. And this was around the time that he did. This was before. And then he ended up doing the interview with Big Boy, if y'all saw it. And I don't, I don't even know. I'm not, I'm not even saying it's an either or, or thing. It was, I don't know that it was between me and Big Boy or if it was between me and whoever or who else was being considered for this opportunity. I do not know. I'm just coming and telling y'all kind of what they told me. And But the one interview I had seen in that time frame had been the the big boy interview and then you know they ended up with the Justin LeBoy interview. Um but that's just the biggest and maybe most recent example of, of when I've been faced with that. But but it's happened tons of times during my career and I just end up not doing the interview. Because and and look, I'm just like, well let me ask my question. The artist can answer any way they want. You know, the the artist could, first of all, you, you're not going to, what you're going to do, beat an answer out of somebody? Like, that, that's not what's going on. You ask a question, if the artist says, hey, look, I'm not, I don't really have an answer for that right now, or no comment, or, or, or you know, you kind of have to move on. It might get a little awkward. Or, again, you can just prepare the artist, or the artist can be prepared to talk about it. Now, you know, there's sometimes I can understand, sometimes there's things legally that artists can't say. Um, you know, I've dealt, I dealt with artists in legal situations where it was like, well, if we can't talk about this, maybe you just shouldn't be doing interviews. Like if your lawyer told you to to shut up, maybe like shutting the hell up completely is, is, is what you need to do. I don't know. There's all, there's all types of uh, of reasons, but I say all that to say, and I'm going to end it here is I saw that interview and I saw that clip and I saw that going around and it made me think about my own experience. And I was like, oh, wow, like I have some insight here. I have experiences just like this and just want to give y'all a little more insight as to what goes on behind the scenes. But that's it. That's all I got for y'all right now. So, you know, like, subscribe, comment. You know what it is. You know, these are just my thoughts. These are just my feelings. But would love to hear from y'all. So y'all know when y'all in the comments, the ones who are here regularly, when y'all in the comments, I'm in the comments with y'all. So let's get at it. All right. Peace.